Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 105 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating treatment of a native coronary artery CTO to treat a recurrent saphenous vein graft failure. The patient was an elderly woman who presented with uh, multiple failures of a vein graft. She had undergone bypass 20 years prior with a limit to LAD and a vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch. She had multiple stent procedures to the vein graft. The last one was when she presented with non stemmy and essentially occluded vein graft. It was very hard to engage the vein graft because one of the previous stent was protruding into the aorta. But eventually, it was possible to advance a guide wire and a balloon and restore flow into the vein graft, although no stents could be placed. Given the recurrent failures of the vein graft, she was referred for PCI of the native coronary artery uh, CTO. These were old images demonstrating the saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch. This was a fairly long graft and the native obtuse marginal had two branches, one superior and one inferior. There was also a lima to LAD that uh, supplied the mid LAD and did not have any significant disease. These are the images when the patient uh, was um, referred for PCI of the CTO. It was extremely hard to engage the vein graft because of the protrusion of the previously placed stent, but this was eventually achieved using an 8 friends AL1 guide catheter and advancing a guide wire through the struts of the protruding stent. Dual injection was performed with an EBU guide into the left main as well as the AL1 guide into the vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch. What we can see is that the proximal cap is at the left main ostium. This is a fairly long occlusion all the way to the bifurcation of the superior and inferior branch to the obtuse marginal branch. And we see that there is a pretty good flow from the vein graft to the superior branch of the obtuse marginal branch. Therefore, our plan was, given the bifurcation of the distal cap, to first try undergrade wire escalation, although we knew the likelihood of success was low, followed by retrograde crossing from the saphenous vein graft to the first obtuse marginal branch. We tried undergrade crossing, but unfortunately the wire kept on going into the LAD, therefore we quickly abandoned that approach, and then attempted retrograde crossing. We could not advance a Keravel microcatheter through the struts of the previously placed stand. That is why we had to predilate those struts. And after doing that, we were then able to advance the Keravel all the way to the obtuse marginal branch and advance it retrograde into the superior branch of the obtuse marginal branch. We then uh, had difficulty crossing from the distal cap because uh, it was very hard to penetrate. We then used what's called an escalation de-escalation technique. We used a stiff Confianza Pro-12 guide wire to nick the distal cap, and then we changed for a softer Pilot 200 guide wire that could be advanced into the uh, mid and proximal circumflex. It was actually pushed into a knuckle that was advanced all the way to the ostium of the circumflex. Moreover, in order to protect the inferior branch of the obtuse marginal branch, we advanced a workhorse guide wire through the vein graft all the way into the inferior branch. We then attempted to advance an undergrade wire to track the retrograde guide wire, but unfortunately, the wires once again tended to go into the LED instead of taking the turn into the circumflex. To overcome this problem, we advanced the retrograde guide wire with difficulty all the way into the left main ostium. And after doing that, essentially we modified the proximal cap and we were then able to advance an undergrade Pilot 200 guide wire into the circumflex overlapping the retrograde guide wire, which is now an excellent setup for doing a reverse cart. Given the angulations, we decided to use the guideliner reverse cart procedure in which we advance a guide catheter extension all the way into the area of re-entry. They did some attempts to re-enter using a Pilot 200 retrograde that were unsuccessful, did some more balloon angioplasty, and then were finally able to advance a retrograde guide wire all the way into the undergrade guide catheter extension. The retrograde guide wire was then uh, externalized, establishing a rail between the vein graft, the obtuse marginal branch, the circumflex, and the left main. 
we predilated, but we then wanted to make sure that we maintained access into the inferior branch of the obtuse marginal branch. And to achieve that, we used a dual lumen microcatheter, a twin pass torque, to advance an undergrade guide wire into the inferior branch. We then ballooned the circumflex and eventually removed the guide wire from the inferior branch and performed standing all the way from the uh, bifurcation to the ostium of the left main. This restored undergrade flow into the circumflex. However, the distal area appeared hazy. And after doing intravascular ultrasound, we found out that uh, the guide wire was subintimal into the into this portion, and uh, the guide wire with advanced retro undergrade into the inferior branch was also subminimal. So what we did is did the stingray for re-entry with a double blind stick and shock technique. We used a stiff wire to stick and then exchange for a pilot 200 to re-enter. And then after doing that, we ballooned the area. We had a lot of difficulty advancing equipment through the recently placed stents in the left main and the proximal circumflex. And then we placed stents um, all the way into the first obtuse marginal branch. Then uh, we jailed uh, the wire into the inferior branch. We then used a dual loom microcath to remove the jail wire and advance a new guide wire. And then we uh, placed an additional stent, essentially doing uh, some sort of mini crash. And final kissing balloon inflation. There remained some disease in the superior branch of the obtuse marginal branch. That's why another stand was placed. And eventually, after doing all this, we were able to restore T3 flow in both the superior as well as the inferior branch of the obtuse marginal. The question now is whether this vein graft should be coiled. And the answer is it depends. But in particular, in this particular case, the challenge was that there was excellent T3 flow from the vein graft. And what uh, is common experience with CT operators is that when there's such brisk flow, there's a high risk of occluding the recently recanalized CTO. And that is why in those cases, it is very common to occlude the vein graft using coils. In this particular case, we used a transit microcatheter and delivered a tornado 5 millimeter by 5 centimeter pushable coil, followed by a second one more proximal, Delivery of those pushable coils is less predictable than delivery of the detachable coils. That's why you can see this coil actually end up being um, deployed um, rather erroneously. But still, there was um, occlusion of the flow into the saphenous vein graft, and the coil did not protrude into the aorta. So it, that was a good, satisfying result. So in the end, we did have um, excellent T3 flow from the left main into the circumflex and occlusion of the saphenous vein graft. That was a long case. It took essentially the full day, 108 minutes of fluoro time, 3.6 gray radiation, and 400 ml of contrast. This case does provide some interesting lessons. The first is that um, recurrent vein graft failure can be treated by recanalizing the native coronary artery, but this can be fairly tough, as was the case in this patient. The second is that when there's difficulty advancing the undergrade wire through areas of tortuosity, Doing retrograde modification by advancing a retrograde knuckle or a retrograde wire uh, through the proximal cap can facilitate wiring with the undergrade guide wire. The third um, uh, lesson is that the bifurcation of the distal cap can be challenging to recanalize and uh, may predispose to losing one of the other branch. And that is why in such cases it is quite often necessary to do two stand techniques and use intravascular imaging to ensure that True lumen position is achieved in both branches and flow is restored in both of those branches. And finally, in cases where the native coronary artery is recanalized, but there is brisk T3 flow from the saphenous vein graft, then calling the saphenous vein graft may be useful in minimizing the risk of occlusion of the native coronary artery. Thank you.